Welcome to Elgin Movie Watchers Podcast. I'm Chuck Slatkin, and I'm here with my co-host, Steve Gould. Hi, Steve. Hey, Chuck. It's uh, great being here, especially tonight for uh, a guy that I always enjoyed uh, talking with when we were working together at the Elgin. Uh, We'd have to spend the whole podcast with all of the names that he used, since he had many uh, we knew him as Chaz at the theater. His full name was uh, Robert Harvey Charles, but he acted in over 140 films as Bobby Astor. So uh, why don't you uh, give our viewers and listeners uh, a little uh, rundown of how it's going to go? Okay, well, I think what we're going to do is uh, back in the day in the... Uh... So I guess it was in 1976 on the Movie Watch program. I did a, a, an interview with uh, uh, Bobby Charles and uh, Bobby Astor. So I think what we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll have a little look at that, and then we'll come back to continue afterwards. So here's uh, uh, Bobby Charles from 1976. Good evening and welcome to a Movie Watch interview. Tonight, my guest is porno film star Bobby Astor. Welcome to Movie Watch, Bobby. Bobby? Well, Bobby has appeared in a number of uh, well-known film classics such as uh, Big Abner, French Shampoo. He's known also as a comedian and musician, and he's known to friend and foe alike as Professor Erwin Corey and Drag. Welcome to the show. You ask me why the children of this country who are running rampant in the streets. Okay, go ahead. I'm How long have you been working for Dannon? <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, seriously, seriously, <laughs> folks. Well, you do no. have hopes of uh, getting into more legitimate films. Do you feel that uh, your exposure <laughs> will hurt you? <laughs> it, it's felt pretty good thus far. I, uh... Probably, you know, probably. I hope not. I don't know too much about the business. I'm a musician by trade. So uh, theater and film is really alien country to me. But I I would imagine, I, as far as I know, it's supposed to be bad news. However, I'm just playing it by ear. We'll see what happens. I'm going to shoot my best shot. Yeah, I'm really trying. I'm learning some monologues. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to try it. Why not? Hey, right? Did you ever think of uh, writing about your experiences in making porno films? So much of the uh, yeah, things that's, written that's, seem to be uh, puff jobs, pardon the expression. Puff, what's a puff job? Well, I mean, people are writing about how wonderful they are, and there's a lack of humor in it about the whole field, I mean, uh, in its representation. We're still really waiting for the truly funny uh, porno film, and I think uh, to say that you'd be excellent in, in, in the starring role. Is that what I was supposed to say it that way, right? Uh, I don't no. know. Did you get that? Did yeah, I, like is that, that the way? Can I check that Did off? you write okay. it that way, Harry? Well, that was Bobby Charles back in the day on Movie Watch. It was great to see uh, uh, Bobby uh, uh, doing his thing and being able to talk with him. So, uh, well, wait a minute, uh, Chuck. Was that? Was that? You mean that young guy that was interviewing Bobby Charles? That was you, huh? Wow. Yes, uh, that was uh, okay. Uh, well, let's see. That was only about, uh, <laughs> what was that, uh, 45 years ago or something like that? Yeah. yeah. But it was well, still still relevant. No, it was. And, uh, you know, he, uh, that was 76, and he, uh, he, he uh, died in 2002. But up till even that time, and though he was suffering from lung cancer, uh, he always kept himself in very good shape. Uh, and uh, his curly hair stayed curly. It didn't get too gray at 64. So uh, he, uh, he holds a special place for me. I really always enjoyed talking and uh, being with Chaz. 
Well, that was very much my experience with him, actually. Uh, so I, I, I'm trying to remember exactly how and where I met Chaz. I know that we, we worked together at this really strange job that I guess you have when you either really need money or it's a strange time or you have a, a strange schedule that you need to be flexible. So the job was, um, there was this uh, furniture company and part of what they did to get their business in, to solicit business was to have these uh, cards made up, uh, index cards with the logo of the company, whatever the information. And basically the cards would say that your company has gotten this discount for you at this furniture store. To make this scam work, what they would do is they hired people to go in early in the morning to office buildings, sneak in and get into where the employees' desks were and put these cards on the desk advertising the, uh, this, furniture, this, this furniture discount, this apparent furniture discount. Of course, the companies knew nothing of this. The scam was making the employees when they got came into their desk in the morning at nine o'clock that on their desk would be this card from ostensibly from their company. So the crew that did this went going around to office buildings in Manhattan included uh, me and Bobby Charles. Either I got him the job there or I met him on the job. I'm still not clear about that, but we spent a lot of time together. Uh, working this job, which was not a very pleasant thing to do because you're always trying to get your work done and, and, and not get busted, <laughs> not get, you know, called out. So, but, uh, but, but, but you guys, uh, you guys knew how to uh, buck and weave and, and avoid things. You were from the Bronx, both of you. Well, you know, uh, actually uh, there was a time we were actually going to, put together an act, the two of us, and call it Buck and Weave, but it didn't work out. Um, but we spent a lot of time together. Well, listen, we knew, knew what to do and how to get away and avoid stuff and whatever, but it didn't make it pleasant. <laughs> it wasn't pleasant. So, we, you know, we were doing this for some time. And actually, the people that we worked for, you know, weren't the nicest people in the world anyway. You had to really keep track of your time to make sure that you got paid you couldn't assume that they were paying you for the time that you put in so after a while uh, we got a little antagonistic towards their attitude and realized well you know some of the time that we're working here we might necessarily not have to be doing this work of going into these office buildings sneaking around and putting cards on uh, people's desks sometime maybe we could just uh, say we did and instead go to 42nd street and for 85 cents, we could watch a nice the double feature or something. So, you know, and is that that's how that term you deserve a break today started, I think. <laughs> so, well, we spent a lot of time together. I mean, uh, uh, Bob, Bobby was uh, a really, you know, a, a charismatic guy, great personality. And, and I met him. He was a, a guy who was a musician who, when things weren't going that great, needed some odd work and whatever. Uh, he was he was a, uh, a percussionist. He played the uh, trap drum set and also in gigs. Uh, I know once he, a couple of times, I went and, and uh, went to a club where he was uh, either once with him, the musician, and another time with a poet basically pay, playing uh, the conga underneath the guy uh, doing his poetry. And it was, you know, it was a job, it was a gig. And uh, then eventually uh, I uh, began working at the Elgin. And of course, you know, time worked out. Bob was looking for some extra work. And I said, hey, you, you want to come, uh, uh, come to see what it'd be like working at the Elgin? I mean, he was a little older than the rest of us. Yeah. I would say he was maybe eight, nine years older than I was. And he had, you know, he exactly. had quite a, quite a, quite a story uh, going through life, but he, he carried himself in such a way that, you know, he, he had a lot of energy. He looked young and whatever, but I think 
you know, part of his charm with the people at the, at the Elgin was the fact that he had been around a while and was never anybody that would, that that would get in the way with anybody, young person, whatever. And he was a knowledgeable guy. He had some interesting stories to tell, you know, read a lot, you know, very knowledgeable about the music. So he, he fit right into the Elgin, uh, the Elgin, uh, culture and and was there there for some time and then i guess you know uh, well we should talk a little bit about his artistic talent as well yeah you know um it's strange uh because i had never gotten to uh uh see or hear him uh with the drums and and, and the like but i know he was because uh uh his uh his other half for many years, who is also an adult film star, uh, AKA Samantha Fox or Stacia McCullough, talked about him as a musician. And uh, I should have known because um, if anybody had gone to the Elgin or, or uh, see, sees us on uh, Movie Watch and sees the t shirts we wear, the very logo that we use. The Elgin Movies Me is the creation of Chaz, of Barbie Charles. Uh, and it shows how creative uh, he, he really was. And when my wife Nancy and I a couple times had dinner over in the East Village with he and Stacia, uh, I looked and I thought, isn't this, this is really amazing. This guy is so well read here. He's a musician. And not my type of artwork is very abstract, but uh, you could see that there was some stuff there. So he was a gifted artist. I mean, this guy, uh, I don't think uh, anything laid a glove on him. But one of the uh, one of the things that uh, I think really helped me uh, change my point of view about many things is when I got into a uh, discussion with him about uh, a uh, particular type of uh, organization. It wasn't really relig a religious organization. It was the Theosophical Society. And uh, one of the things that he did way back in the 70s at the Elgin, and I wasn't the only one that listened to him about this, uh, he was talking about the Kabbalah, which is a type of uh, Jewish mysticism, but uh, it, he was talking about it from uh, almost an unreligious point of view that uh, the Theosophical Society was trying to uh, get peace and brotherhood in the world. And uh, he, I remember I kept this to this day, this book that he gave me when uh, we worked at the Elgin together. It's called The Brotherhood of Light. And it talks about the sacred Kabbalah and uh, this guy was just filled with information. If you ever sat down, I mean, he could be a great jokester. I mean, uh, wasn't he was called uh, the uh, uh, the clown prince of porn. So, I mean, he had a great shtick, could be an MC, but he was so knowledgeable in so many ways. Yeah. And he also knew a lot of people. Actually, when he was younger, he uh, spent a lot of time uh, hanging out with uh, Lenny Bruce. That they were uh, oh that's right running mates there for a while so uh, he had some interesting stories about uh, about Lenny and some of the other you know mus musicians that he knew over the years and uh, he was an interesting guy so we knew him as a musician we knew him as an artist we knew him as someone who's really well read someone with a great sense of humor and then you helped him along with uh, his career goals there Steve yeah well I. I, I hate to say, well, he was older than me, so I couldn't have, I couldn't have uh, really led him down the primrose path. But uh, the poor guy was hurting for money. Uh, he says, eh, listen, Steve, you and Chuck, you're killing me here with this uh, hourly wage. I got to find something to augment it. And that's when, uh, because I knew uh, an individual uh, who uh, in Chelsea was known in the biz, uh, who now is a... Uh, real estate developer in Las Vegas, what else? Uh, and uh, he used to make loops. And I knew him through uh, a, uh, 
late lamented friend of mine. And uh, I said, well, listen, Chaz, would you ever uh, think for a few bucks of uh, maybe uh, doing a little uh, hardcore? They call them loops. He said, hey, I'll take I'll take it. Money's money. And he was so he he so impressed Leonard when he went up there that uh, Leonard started using him. People in the biz saw him. Uh, he developed his uh, shtick, uh, his first big film, which I think was 77 or 78, was uh, Bob, Barbara Broadcast, where he was the maitre d' at an upscale uh, restaurant. And if a waitress, uh, you know, broke a dish or a, uh, a, a diner, a, fe a female diner didn't have all of the money or forgot the tip, uh, he would take it out and trade. So he developed a, uh, a real following uh, in the business. So, uh, and I think, as you pointed out to me, because I didn't e even know how many that, what, uh, how many, uh, what was it, 140 or something films? Yeah, yeah. He made, he made 140 films. I, I, I should go back to the beginning. So one day he came... Uh, into the theater, into the manager's office, and he says, hey, uh, my brother took some uh, publicity f pictures uh, for me. Would you like to see him? And I, and, I, and I said, sure, of course. What I didn't expect was uh, him to be uh, uh, naked. The full in, Monty. In, yeah, exactly, in his full glory there. And, and they were just definitely very impressed. It was good photos, and it really showed off his... Uh, his uh, talents to say, yeah, attributes there. And it's really something because as, you know, he continued in, in the biz, you know, establishing uh, the, uh, you know, reputation for himself and his comedic uh, uh, talents and whatever in, in, in the business, he also established a pretty good uh, uh, re reputation for himself as, uh, you know, being a decent guy, trying, you know, to help people out. And uh, uh, somewhere along the line, I guess he, he felt like he, you know, since he wasn't he, he wasn't exactly initially proud of what he was doing, he felt he needed to balance it out by maybe doing some good works with people, so to yeah. help out, you know, people who uh, uh, you know, maybe could you, know, you use some help in certain areas. And he was, uh, but that's who he was. You know, yeah. uh, in terms of his in, in intelligence, his humor, and his uh, his uh, uh, caring caring for people, and uh, you know, and eventually, as things started, you know, going well for him in in that period, I guess, from maybe mid seventies to mid eighties, when he really made, you know, the vast majority of these movies, you know, it's not like he became a wealthy person, but he didn't have to worry about money anymore. Yeah. Which for someone who had scuffling for years as a musician, it was a, uh, you know, a nice relief for him. Well, you know, uh, uh, that that highlights what exactly what uh, uh, Stacia would say. Now they they met actually on set. I forget the name of the movie they were in together, the first one, but uh, they had met there, and Stacia uh, or Samantha Fox as she was then. Uh, was going to uh, an event and I guess she was kind of hot for this one other guy, a porno guy. And, uh, but Chaz was there and this guy was uh, uh, friends with Chaz. And I said, oh, we're all gonna go to this uh, party. And uh, Stacia, as she tells it, uh, you know, really got kind of hammered at the party. And this guy, uh, I guess, saw a, a better prey at the party and kind of drifted away from her. And uh, who was there to help her get home, but Chaz. And that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of guy he was. And I think for that reason, uh, they were together over those 20 years uh, living uh, side by side in his uh, East Village, uh, apartment building uh they had uh, flats right next to each other and uh uh she uh took care of him till uh, the day he died of lung cancer so uh and sadly we have to report uh to those that uh, 
don't know that uh, uh, Samantha Fox, uh, uh, who actually was a graduate of Sarah Lawrence and whose father was a diplomat, uh, she, uh, her real name was Stacia McCullough, and she became an incredibly good uh, physical therapist. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, during uh, the COVID time, uh, she succumbed last year uh, herself to COVID. Yeah, that's un unfortunate uh, and uh, too many. But uh, well, it was really great that they had that relationship for the years, uh, uh, Chaz and, and, and Samantha Fox. Um, and it was just uh, one of those uh, times, you know, feeling happy for someone, you know, like Chaz, who had, had been around, been through so much and, and uh, actually got, got, him, got himself together and got himself established and got into a relationship, all the kinds of things that uh, maybe you wouldn't think the way to get there was to become a porno star, but... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. leave it to him to take a special route. <laughs> and uh, you know, he was uh, it was uh, unusual. He actually became a uh, somewhat of a cultural icon. I saw this thing. I don't know if you you came a, a, across. It was in, in, in 2013. I hope it wasn't Screw Magazine. <laughs> no, no, it was it was a, a literary, maybe Vanity Fair or something like that. The person was writing an article about Anthony Weiner after his old problems and exploits and whatever, and 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 part of the the thesis of the of the author was that if Anthony Weiner had uh, been lived in the in the seventies and had this uh, uh, penchant for the involvement he had with himself and his body and whatever. He might have uh, uh, gone into uh, uh, adult films, and porno stars, and in the article, they they the guy likens him to uh, to Bobby Astor. Oh wow! Because they were because you know the way they were built, the way they looked, yeah. you, know, the, yeah. you know, being uh, uh, you know uh, Jews, and there were a number of you know uh, Jewish male stars in porno. Sure. Yeah. Talk, uh, I think Chaz talked about that once about how the guys were Jews in most cases and the women were women were Catholics, Catholics. <laughs> and he had his own analysis as to why having to do with, uh, you know, whatever basis of oppression or whatever. But uh, yeah, so so and I think this thing was written in, in 2013. Wow. Long, long after long uh, after. Uh, Yes. Chaz died. Yeah. Chaz died. He was still, you know, within a certain area. There, this, you know, sure. cultural I icon that uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he would he would he would he would get a laugh out of knowing that 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 that, that took place at, yeah. at this time. And also, of course, I mean, he went into the what what is the Academy Awards or or, or the oh Hall yeah of the Fame. adult uh, adult film association. He got. A couple of awards from them, and uh, people just uh, really enjoyed his uh, shtick. You know, there are many people, uh, uh, even to this day, that you know are thinking of pornographic films. Uh, that it's you know guys in trench coats uh, rocking back and forth in a seat in a darkened auditorium. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, it it has gone a little more mainstream. There are young couples that can uh, rent uh, stream adult videos and stuff. And uh, I think he was ahead of his time because uh, he, he was somebody who, yes, could perform. And, you know, when the, when the goods were down, he could do it. But he also did things with uh, uh, shtick and class, and the directors loved him for it. I mean, uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, Chuck Vincent, who's dead and gone himself, uh, always liked uh, uh, Bobby Charles or uh, Bobby Astor, I should say. Yeah, he uh, he definitely set a uh, a high bar, and maybe he wasn't 
for those that uh, maybe want a little further detail in adult film, he was definitely not uh, speaking of attributes like uh, John Holmes, but right. there was a lot more to, to uh, Chaz or Bobby Astor's package than there was to John Holmes, I'll tell you. So, uh, and, you know, I should mention one other thing that uh, an involvement uh, and Chaz being the good guy that he was, uh, I don't think obviously we ever used it, but we were thinking because of a, a time, maybe it was during uh, uh, King Kong when it was opening or something, that we might have uh, done a, uh, an article or something and uh, our, our editor of the uh, Marble Film News and Comment uh, is a gifted photographer and we used to have a plant store in Chelsea down the block from the Elgin on 8th Avenue and about 17th Street called Farmer Gray Plants. And uh, Gary and all of us knew the guy that owned it. And we were able to use his uh, store one time uh, when it was closed. And uh, Chaz as kind of like in a gorilla haunch running up steps around plants was chasing a few naked women yeah so um so that was uh that was another uh thing Chaz says oh yeah you want me want me to chase these women naked yeah i don't care you know i'll, I'll do the shoot for you so anyway before we continue if people want to uh communicate with us you can write to us at elgin movie watchers at gmail.com and please follow us on Twitter at Elgin Movie, Instagram at Elgin Movie Watchers, and on Facebook at Elgin Movie Watchers Podcast. And uh, if you have anything to say, you know, drop us an email at Elvin, Elgin. <laughs> He's back again. Elgin Movie Watchers at, at gmail.com. And of course, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, Elgin Movie Watchers, uh, that's great. And if you're listening to this on a podcast and would like to see us on YouTube, go to YouTube Elgin Movie Watchers and uh, you'll be able to you know, see uh, Steve and me do this. And uh, well, maybe that's a reason to stick with the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But actually, so. uh, you know, Ian edits in some nice. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we got some. For, uh, got some great footage about. that uh, that uh, from the interview that. Uh, you uh you gave with him uh i think people really appreciate it because it shows uh that really the kind of guy uh that we knew that Chaz was that's right and particularly for yogurt fans it's really it's <laughs> yes indeed thing. so yeah so it, it, it's you know it's when you so what you know Chaz you know Died with what, 17 years ago or something? Uh, I think it was 2002. Oh, so it's even longer than 19 years ago. Yeah, I think that so was that's, it. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a long time, but it's nice that, uh, you know, for him to be remembered and for some people to discover, you know, who he was and things about him. I'm sure yeah. some of his uh, adult films are still available. Uh, oh, the, you uh, betcha. And, <laughs> you betcha. He's still making money for people. So anyway, I just uh, really happy. It's funny because I was like friendly with Chaz uh, originally. And then, you know, Steve and Nancy became, you know, friends towards the end. But between the two of us, we were friends with Chaz for a long time. <laughs> we sure were. There and I'm so glad we had him in our life for whatever time we did. Yeah, a guy, a guy with a, a great sense of humor real talent as a musician, an artist, an actor, and uh, really an, a, a nice person that would really, you know, connect with people from whatever backgrounds, different ages and whatever. And it was real, uh, it was really valued uh, at, at the Elgin by people uh, because of his uh, knowledge and wisdom and of course his great sense of humor. So there we are. As they say, uh, as they say in Ireland, a real Mitch. <laughs> that's it you know he, he that's what he he really wanted to be he said that's what he got out of was was being a mensch 
So I think uh, that's about it for today, Steve, in terms of this yeah. episode. But uh, again, I guess thank- we certainly did it this. We did it this time. Yeah. <laughs> thank everybody for what? listening to this and watching this episode. And uh, tune in next time. We'll see and- you. Yeah. And, and check out on YouTube. Uh, we've got a couple of episodes there that you can uh, watch if you haven't seen them. So remember, you know, okay. Elgin Movie Watchers podcast. We have a new episode just about every week. And uh, you can reach out to us at Elgin Movie Watchers at gmail.com. Well, thanks, Steve. Okay, thank you. We had a we had a great time reminiscing about a great guy. Well, and on that note, we'd like to conclude the movie watch interview with Bobby. <laughs> I'm Chuck Selected. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>